C, C, tenant, whatever. I don't address it too much or too little on social media. Actually, sis, you have to understand we are on a, t a television show where the narrative is completely changed to something that it is not. And it always asks me questions. And for a very long time, I wouldn't answer them. But I get to a point where now niggas want to know, are, are we getting along? Yeah, we're getting along. And it's not a secret that we only get along when he's single. And at the end of the day, I, so nobody can say me speaking my truth and me saying how it really is is for a storyline, for a check, for a none of that. I, I finish my contractual obligations. I will not be returning to Love and Hip Hop unless I go bankrupt. Um, I was not fired. I left on my own recognizance and own accord. I'm hoping that that plays a role in as to why he's being so uh, easygoing these days. Um, and I hope that it lasts. And I hope that because it was going to take one of us and me down. What has this? What has my storyline been since season one? Defending my position as a mother. And from seasons one to three, I actually let the cast get away with dragging me because I'm not irrational like they try to make me seem. I knew that none of the cast would have anything to say about me as a, as a mother if the father of my child had. I got zero respect as an artist. I was that when I met him as a teenager. I was that before the show. I was that <clears throat> my father is a 10 time Grammy award winner. I grew up in the business. None of that was told to you guys. Y'all think I'm just some bitter baby mama who decided. So at the end of the day, you know, I have every right to defend my position as a woman, as a mother. And it's not until I tell the truth that people start to readjust their narratives. Meaning it's not until I come on here when I was on the show, I would have to come on here and I would have to rip VH1 and moan at me and just the narrative to be semi-correct, right? And so now I don't have to worry about any of that. I get to say what I want to say without my, my checks being threatened, without my job being threatened, without me being blackballed. Like, I'm free. I'm clear. I did, the, did it the way I was supposed to do it. I did all seven seasons. That was what was asked of me. Atlanta season eight counted as six out of my seven. Hollywood season six counted. If I'm not on the show for him to fuck me over every season with a new, then we don't we don't have that issue, right? So I made the sacrifice. I said I'll walk away from the six figure salary for the sake of you know my sin was at risk not because at the end of the day my mental health was suffering because I just couldn't understand why like what is it that you hate about me so much that you just during the two month break the minute a pickup notice comes out you're back on your at my expense though and I just don't get it. I never took you to court. I have felt about you. I've never kept your son from you. Even when you, when you put your hands on me in front of him at a basketball game, even when you got in my face knowing that I was by myself at, at his basketball game, the boy was two and a half, taunting me, talking about if you took, and if you, this nigga put his hands on me in front of everybody at a basketball game. And my bio dad called him and said, yo, niggas disappear every, every day. And nobody gives up. Don't be one of them. And it wasn't until then that the nigga, y'all think I'm in love with this man and I want to be with this man. Y'all have no idea. He, he's the bitter baby mama. Not me. The nigga was on the run. Did ever. You went to marriage boot camp. Whilst being on the run. I kept your secret. Until here we are again in season six and boom, I was done protecting him. Period. I was just whatever Omari's legal team needed, they got it. Whatever production needed for me, 
they got it. Whatever Jason Lee wanted to know, he got it. Like, I just was like, because there's no protection for me. None. No consideration, not even for my emotional well-being. Little Fizz has made Monice look bad since episode 111 Hip Hop Hollywood. His storyline has been four words since the beginning. Monice ain't. Little Fizz talked about this lady, the same woman who gave birth to his only child, like she was a dog. Which is just, in my personal opinion, so unmanly. If, if he still had that ponytail, I would pull it. <laughs> Out of frustration. Listen, <laughs> Monice has been doing music for a very long time, y'all. Make sure you support her music on different platforms, whether you can find her on Apple, Spotify, Amazon, wherever you can find her music. Make sure you check out her Instagram page and everything. Did y'all know that she's the voice on the America's Next Top Model theme song? You know, the one that goes, you want to be on top? Now, some people are saying that's actually Tyra Banks saying that part in this Monice singing background i don't know how true that is but i thought that she was singing the want to be on top part but here's the thing right no matter what monice does little fizz is gonna have a problem with her uh, apparently they were not compatible i don't know what their astrological signs are. i think monice is a gemini i'm gonna have to look up what his astrological sign is and whether or not they're considered to be compatible according to astrology because I, they, they should have just never got together the only good thing that came out of them getting together was cam shout out to cam but this fool allegedly for legal reasons put his hands on her what does that mean did he shake her hand no i'll just just be stupid no but seriously all jokes aside she didn't get too specific which which is perfectly fine and that's perfectly acceptable but the fact that something allegedly happened at all doesn't sit well with me and I mean, I always thought, listen, <laughs> I always thought Lil Fizz was a B-A-N, but now I'm just like, okay, like he really ain't about much at all. I'm so glad that they're done. I'm so glad that she moved on. He, he's a, he's a fool. What could Moniz have done or said that would make you just flip and switch up in public at a basketball game and embarrass her in front of all of those people? Allegedly. And I have to say it just like that because you never know, okay? But anyways, I this this is from a, was it May 27th of 2020 Instagram live show? And I cut up a couple of other clips. When, ooh, where do y'all see those? Anyway, make sure you subscribe. Click all notifications. Thumbs up this video. Click the thumbs up button. Subscribe. All notifications. Make sure you post a comment below even if you're just saying hi. And if you don't know what to say, yeah, just say hi. But the secret password to say in the comment section to let me know you listen all the way until the end is Teeny Fizzle Pop. Because that's her nickname for him. <laughs> that was the shot I heard all around the world. Teeny Fizzle Pop. I love that nickname. Anyways, I got to go, y'all. MAGA. Much love to Monice. Click the subscribe button right now for more Meat Magazine. Click the notification bell. All notifications. Click the thumbs up button on this video. Post the comment below the video in the comment section. Be sure to subscribe to all the Meat Magazine channels for more videos. The links to my other channels are in the description box.